Hello again everybody, Dave here for the second night today, April 14th, I mean Cinco de Mayo, that's right, it's May 5th. Welcome to the Syndicated Pipe Club, and as always, hosting with me on this side, nope, I'm going to get it right one of these times, this side of the screen is Greg. How are you doing tonight, Greg? Ah, uh, feeling like it's deja vu, I feel All like we over just again. recorded an episode, yeah. <laughs> But uh, since it's uh, Cinco de Mayo, you know what also it was uh, yesterday. May 4th. May the 4th be with you. Yes. Star Wars Day. And, yes. And uh, to celebrate Star Wars Day, we are not going to be talking about Star Wars. Yes, this is our Star Wars Day episode, and we're not going to be talking about it at all. Well, yes, we might which, be, you know, because this is going to be just a what have you been watching episode. And maybe somebody's been watching Star Wars. That's a good point. No, <laughs> I have not. No. Mandalorian's over for a while. The, who knows if we're going to have any new Star Wars content. And to be quite frank, I don't even know if I'm going to watch a Star Wars movie on Star Wars Day, so. Yeah. I think on Disney Plus 2, let's see, uh, they still have uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, which I've heard not great things about. Uh, um, even Wa I think WandaVision I heard that uh, uh, it started off great but uh, ending kind of turned a lot of people off I don't know why I thought that ending was great hmm. the problem is though I know about the release schedule for how the MCU was supposed to play out mm -hmm. before COVID happened and WandaVision while it was originally slated to um, to release right when it did Black Widow and, it, and all that stuff all, like all the movies that have been pushed back were supposed to have come out already so like WandaVision was supposed to air just before Doctor Strange the next Doctor Strange movie like literally right. WandaVision was supposed to end and then the next week or within a couple of weeks Doctor Strange was supposed to come out right unfortunately like it's a shame because Marvel's been and and really it's no fault of their own no no not at all you know, um, it's just a shame that uh, Marvel wasn't able to really be able to do uh, all the stuff that they planned quite like uh they've been able to the past uh you know years like with agents of shield and whatnot yeah i i just think that maybe one division wouldn't uh when it the way it ended might not have put so many people off because had the timeline been able for release been able to stay intact i'm betting there are some you know cut scenes like you know the tag scenes at the end of those movies that may have explained a few things that, you know, might have been uh, important. Right. Because I know uh, the um, Wanda was supposed to be in, uh, is supposed to be in the next Doctor Strange movie. Which is why WandaVision was supposed to release and complete just before the release of Doctor Strange because I have a feeling and of course we're not going to find this out until next year now that uh, the cut scene at the end of WandaVision this last episode the tag scene just like they do in the movies they did it here um, was supposed to play like lead right into Doctor Strange so I'm going to say that the twins have some her and the twins in her quest to get her boys back is going to be a key component to Doctor Strange probably because that was a big story in um in the comics yeah Now, as far as, far as Falcon and the Winter Soldier goes, I haven't given it uh, given it a look yet. Not because I have heard that anything's wrong with it or whatnot. It was just after one division, so going. You know what, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, it's just going to be 
exactly what I expect something like that to be. It's going to be your standard Marvel type thing. Except in TV series form. So, yeah. after something as different as WandaVision, I didn't really want to go back and have a look at a typical Marvel movie in TV form. Yeah. But uh, I'm planning on when Loki releases, giving that uh, a go. Because it looks like it's going to be one of those things that's a bit uh, more interesting, let's say. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, still, uh, do you have any other uh, pipes uh, set up after this, or is that your only pipe for tonight? Well, it's not going to be. I'm going to be finishing off with that one. And if you guys don't recognize it from last week, it's still I'm still smoking the Savinelli root briar. But I do have my Shire Cobbett in the wings and in it if I get to it which I probably will because that's almost done I'm going to be smoking some boneyard which is just a, a C and D cast off mix English mix mm -hmm. so I've smoked it before it's great tobacco cheap tobacco $16 American per pound so very economical Especially yeah. if you're on a budget. I've padded out my cellar with two or three pounds of it, so there might be a pound of that coming too. Because it's it's one of those pounds that you can get by the border pretty easily because the dollar amount's so low they and they won't it's just one of those things. The way they look at tobacco here is if it's a certain dollar amount they'll push it through no matter no matter like how much is in it or whatever, but that one will only get stopped at the, at the border coming across for duty and stuff if you happen to get pulled for a random inspection. I've brought in, like I said, I brought in about three pounds of the stuff over the last few years, and I can get that across with no problem. Mm -hmm. That one's always worried me because it's a pound of freaking tobacco. Right. So yeah, that's what I got lined up for when the root briar is done. What about you? Like, are you under your second pipe for the night yet, or? Uh, I'm about to switch over, but I'm going to be switching to my first pipe, uh, Peterson here, the uh, author. With um, you know, it's a uh, months past uh, Thanksgiving cake from uh, L.J. Peretti from uh, 2018. Nice. Uh, yeah, this boneyard is from 2017. Uh. Come to think of it, the only tobaccos I have here that uh, have less than a year on it are the ones that I ordered from the 20 uh, from the Country Squire last year. <clears throat> Everything else has got at least three years on it. That's good. <sighs> yep, cellaring doth have its advantages. And it does. Ironically, <sighs> too, most of the stuff that I have is discontinued. Uh, it's so sad. Uh, yeah, it's too bad. Uh, still thinking of all the stuff I missed out on McClellan.
Yeah, I put my I put uh, I put my Frogmorton back in the cellar for a while. I didn't smoke it often, but I've got I got out ones that uh, I've had kicking around for a bit that I want to start smoking through. You know, I got 20 jars behind me, and I'm not bringing another thing out until at least I empty one jar. I'm gonna try to I'm gonna yeah. try to keep 20 jars behind me at all times. But I'm not switching out and going for other things. I'm smoking through these jars, and when one of the jars goes, then I'll replace it. But until that time, you know, it might take me till next year to replace one of those jars. Yeah. <laughs> I hear ya. I should do that, but <laughs> uh, it's so hard sometimes because I'm just too much of a... I like to just <laughs> spread things out a bit but there's there's definitely some blends that I need to just kind of work through finally and just get them out so I can shift uh, other things and stuff that I, I probably won't uh, you know plan on replacing yeah totally understand what you mean there it's like this, this jar of boneyard here that I that I've got that I'm gonna dip into actually I'm gonna open it up right now because I'm getting down to the point where I think I'm gonna be smoking ash pretty soon I have so many more of these because I brought in so many pounds of it that uh, when this jar goes, I'm going to put something else in because I have so much of it. Uh, yeah, and there's actually some blends that I'm just kind of behind of jarring, but uh, just need to. I, I've had like a the components for like a uh, haunted pirate ship for a while because uh, I'd finished off my first version of it and uh, just haven't got hadn't gone around to mixing that up yet but I finally did that uh, about two nights ago so uh, just letting it sip for a month before I start opening it So this is quite uh, accidentally turned into a pipe tobacco episode. That it has. That's good, you know. So yeah, there's some blends that I have. Um, well, there's one blend from McBaron that I, I'm trying to finish up, and uh, which is a uh, I have a tin of Stockton, and that's one that. Uh, I believe they stopped doing, which, uh, you know, like I, I just kind of, uh, I enjoyed it for a while, but uh, and it's not a bad tobacco. It's just uh, other things got my attention a bit more. Uh, but uh, it's too bad because I really like the whole um, bird's eye cut uh, pipe tobacco. It's a interesting way to, you know, kind of prepare pipe tobacco. So for us, it was just last week, but uh, for you, the viewer or listener, depending on what format you're looking at, it was uh, now about four weeks ago where I did the, the first ever fold and stuff method with a flake in my little Nordic compass. And uh, in that episode, I did not finish it off. I ended up waiting for a day or uh, didn't have any chance to smoke the rest of it the next day. But finished it off on the Friday, the other day I have guaranteed smoking time. And, uh, yeah, so that was like a two-day smoke. And I still smoked that, what was left of the, in the bowl, for another 30 minutes or so. So mm. that, that got me about an hour doing it that way on that little tiny compass. So imagine doing That's that in a full-size pipe. Yeah. I'll have to try the. It's been a while since I've done the fold and stuff method. I might have to break that out and try it again because I do enjoy it. I just don't. Uh, I always just do the. Um, I always just kind of, uh, you know, rub out the tobacco. That's typically what I do too. But I just that day was well. 
Figured I'd try something new, you know, I hadn't done it before and I heard that it made the smoke longer and damn did it, because I usually smoke that, uh, that compass for about 15 to 20 minutes tops. It's one of my small, I just have time for a quick smoke pipes. Be careful not to uh, do that with a Boswell. Ooh. I'd still be smoking that thing today. But I'm willing to bet you know, something like the size of a Boswell, the, the tobacco would go rancid after a while. Yeah. So many relights and whatnot. It wasn't, it wasn't bad letting it sit in the pipe for a, a day and a half and then just relighting it and finish it off, but I don't think it would you, you'd want to leave it sit for more than that. No, not at all. And I'm willing to bet now there are people out there that are pipe smokers going, why would you even do that for that long? What's wrong with you? And I say to you, it's because I'm broke. So I smoke what I can. Well, at least you're not uh, Sherlock Holmes and uh, dumping the dottle into a uh, slipper to smoke later. I must have read that on my last read-through of Sherlock Holmes stories, but yeah, that's disgusting. Or, you know, like uh, some people I've heard of that go into into uh, smoke shops and start uh, digging around in the ashtrays for leftovers that might still be good. Uh, no, thank you. I'm pretty sure COVID would have put an end to that anyway. Yeah. Occasionally, like, if I am smoking a pipe and I think it's at the end and I dump it out and there's a lot of uh, unused tobacco left, I might uh, rescue it and just put it into the next pipe. But uh, I'm not, like, saving it for days and days later. So when we discussed this episode, we were going to do a, what are you watching? So what are you watching other than what we've been discussing here for Last Airbender? Yes. Uh, still working through Cobra Kai. We're on the third season. And uh, man, I just cannot stop recommending the show. It's been so great. And uh, like, it, it's honestly been one of the best stories that I, I've watched in a while. And, you know, it's funny because it's like a karate show, but like, like they do such a good job uh, and it's like make, and they do like flashbacks to like the different movies. And, uh, you know, I've only seen the first karate kid and it's been years, but it makes me want to go back and see all three. And, uh, man, it, it's just an incredible show. Like I, I really cannot stop raving about it. Like all the, you know the original actors the kids the, the new you know, generation kids like they all just are awesome in their own way and uh you really just come to like really get into it and enjoy it lately you know i, ha I haven't watched uh you know Sometimes I have to be in the mood to watch it, uh, mainly to, to watch anything that's kind of like a, you know, continuous uh, show, like uh, it's telling an ongoing story. But, uh, you know, whenever it comes on and I sit down and watch it, like, like I always end up like, man, it's so hard not to like go into the next episode and see what happens. And there have been a couple of times where we'll like, start to watching the beginning of the next episode just to see what happens. Well, my wife and I, we've been watching, we started this a while ago, we're in season four of uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer from the early, late 90s, early 2000s, and uh, alongside that, we're also watching the first season of Angel, 
because that's where they go concurrent. Hmm. And for anybody who might decide to go back and watch these shows, I recommend that once you get to season four of Buffy, you watch season one of Angel and continue through the end of both shows runs because there are so many episodes at the very least in season one where the characters cross over and this is another one of those shows where all the crossovers that have happened in season one of Angel and season four of Buffy between the two shows I thought they happened in later seasons some of them but no, no, they're all in season four and season one of those two respective shows. So we've been doing that. My wife's sitting there going, do I have to watch it like this? And they're going, yes. There's a certain amount of time that you can watch both shows separately, but eventually you're going to run into an episode that's not going to make sense without the information from the other series. That's a really interesting way to, to do a show. Because, uh, I mean, you know, we get a little bit of that. We get a little bit of that in, uh, like, the, the DC CW shows. But uh, they keep that fairly limited. Yeah, for the they, most they, part. they do try to keep that down to the uh, large crossover events, pretty much. I mean, they did the, the the biggest point where they did that was when they were crossing over when it was just uh, Arrow and uh, the Flash. Like you'd see two or three mini crossovers happen over the first couple of seasons before they started bringing in everybody. Before Legends had started, before Supergirl had started, and then they started doing these big crossover uh, crossover event events. But uh, that's basically old hat because like I said like Buffy and Angel were doing it years ago before those things even existed mm-hmm. uh, yeah no it's a cool way to do it so yeah we're watching that um, I'm jumping all over the place I've been watching some Milo Murphy's Law here and there my son has gotten into the new run of Animaniacs, so we've been watching that together. He likes Pinky in the Brain. Yeah. Doesn't care much for the rest of the show, but he really likes the Pinky in the Brain parts, because that's what he wants to see. So they're going, okay. So when are they going to bring back Pinky in the Brain as its own show like they did before? Right. Now, what I'd like to see is them, since they got this new run out, I'd like to see them bring back the old Animaniacs and Pinky and the Brain shows. Yeah. I would agree with that. I would, uh, I have the first two seasons of Animaniacs on DVD, but I would, uh, I would enjoy having the ability to stream it. It's all this nice wonder- stuff like on that, that on DVD for, you know, the times when, you know, your internet goes down or you're, in my case, out at my parents where, you know, streaming well, it used to be something that's impossible to do until High Speed made it out to them Yeah, a couple of years ago. You know, I, I have some shows like that. I have that. I have the um, first season of Freakazoid that a friend gave me, which is another good show from the era. Um, I got my mom uh, at least the first season of The Adventures of Pete and Pete, which is a fun 90s show from Nickelodeon uh, so yeah just uh, it'd be nice to be able to find something that had uh, a little bit more of those uh, classic shows let's see what else have I been doing uh, a month or so ago, a couple months ago I started watching uh, the current seasons of NCI the NCIS series but haven't gotten back to them yet so but they're there uh, for me to get to when I get to them um, but most of my watching right now has been hermitcraft on YouTube it's uh, 
bunch of people that have been playing uh, Minecraft for years on the on the Hermitcraft server, and they all put out episodes, and I found them completely by mistake. I was when I started playing Minecraft, I was wondering how to do stuff. So, just like any person in the, in the modern era trying to figure out how to do something, where do you go? You go to YouTube. And you type it in, and you find what you need to know. And I was looking for how to build a piston door. And I stumbled across Mumbo Jumbo. He's a big redstone stone guy. And he uh, was doing videos, and I said, noticed uh, when he was doing uh, in between, I, when I went to his channel, I noticed in between his uh, how-to videos, there were these Hermitcraft episodes. And I said, well, what's this? So... I went back and I found the first episode of this, the current season and I watched him through and saw his interactions with other people on the server and whatnot. So I was like, okay, that's cool. And then I decided, you know, I need to learn how to, you know, plan out some builds and whatnot. So I got, got the guy doing the technical aspect, great. So I found, uh, found Grian. Who is a builder? He likes to, you know, build stuff out and you know add the add the details and whatnot. So I started watching some of his how tos, and uh, I saw that he also was making Herbitcraft videos. So I went back and I rewatched season seven from his perspective, and then I did it again with an. Uh, I've done it now. I'm working on my fourth run through with these guys. Um, so it was good times with Scar, and also I'm right now currently watching uh, uh, B Dubs. His handle is a little bit more complicated than that, and I just don't know how to do it without it in front of me. So his his nickname of his nickname is B Dubs. So I've been I'm on about episode 25 of his season seven, and I'm watching that through now. It's interesting because you can see the same thing happen from multiple perspectives this way. Mm-hmm. And uh, at some point, the four people that I've mentioned have all been interacting in different in different ways throughout the throughout the season so far. So it's like eventually I come across a point where, oh yes, I've watched that from his perspective and his perspective and his perspective. Now I can see it from this guy's perspective. It's it's interesting because everybody everybody's got a different take on on everything. It's just common. Your perspective is your perspective. So getting to be able to see something from multiple perspectives, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Plus, Let's it gives see. me ideas for things to try when I'm playing Minecraft. Nice. Let's see uh, so a couple of weeks ago at, uh, my, uh, pipe band practice, uh, I discovered that one of the, my, uh, uh, fellow members is also a, a big mystery science theater fan. And, uh, so he introduced me to a, uh, streaming service that I had on my Apple TV, but I had never really explored called Pluto TV. And, uh, on it and uh, you don't have to have uh, it's something that you can just you know have on your computer or something too but it's also on streaming platforms I think for free but uh, with it it has a whole bunch of different channels and come to realize that it's like uh, it runs uh, like reruns of like old classic shows and um, each channel kind of has like a different theme and he introduced me it because there was uh, a mystery science theater channel where it just plays mystery science theater episodes uh 24 7 and uh, the channel next to it uh airs uh riff tracks episodes uh, oh nice 24 7. so uh that was pretty exciting but uh you know i was kind of exploring and seeing what else that they had and they had everything from uh unsolved mysteries uh the <laughs> Uh, to, Sorry, uh, I got to interrupt you here, Greg. I would just uh, while you're talking about it, I was saying, okay, um, let's let's see what uh, I just decided to look it up on the internet and uh, let's see uh, what uh, what this is all about. And 
it pops up and it's the main thing and it shows live TV and on demand and it shows what's live on Pluto TV right now and it's Mystery Science Theater 3000 that popped up <laughs> so that's I had to funny. laugh at that because that's what you were talking about anyway sorry go ahead oh it's it's totally cool but uh, they also have uh, like a, a BBC channel uh, they have a channel that just plays all the classic Doctor Who uh, episodes that are, have been released uh, that are not lost uh, which is really exciting for me because like I love classic Doctor Who and uh, uh, like I don't have hundreds and hundreds of dollars to spend on picking up uh, episodes otherwise mm-hmm, I would mm-hmm. um, uh, that's the one thing that I miss about uh, the Netflix uh, uh, disc uh, system because I was able to watch quite a bit of classic Doctor Who that way um, they had the Carol Burnett show which I put on for my mom before uh, we started put, watching some of the old classic uh, uh, Muppet show on uh, Disney Plus um, and that one uh, that was that was nice because uh, actually one of my earliest uh, television memories uh, with my family uh, like watching something as a family was at uh, I think in the late 80s uh, on Friday nights they would air um, The Muppet Show and Fraggle Rock back to back and so we would watch that all together as a family uh, but yeah like those. Pluto TV like I, I was pretty impressed with like the different stuff that they had on there we we even had some reality tv stuff on there like the amazing race and survivor which uh, i thought was fun but uh you know and yeah there's commercial breaks but uh you know what i uh, honestly the the commercials aren't that bad and uh and with the mystery science theater one like for years it's just been like i'll select look up an episode you know that i wanted to watch uh, because i own all of them I collected them uh, through either the official releases or uh, DVD traders. And so I would just usually watch like maybe cycle through about 25 episodes that I really loved. Well, there were some episodes that just kind of got forgotten. And the nice thing about this is, you know, you're not the one that's, you know, kind of picking the episode. You're kind of like at the mercy uh, you know it's basically what's airing on tv which I means sometimes there's going to be an episode on that uh, you haven't seen in like years and uh, that, that actually happened uh, after i introduced it uh, to uh, my friend marcus we were watching and uh, the episode hamlet came on which is an infamous uh, final season of a uh, mystery science theater episode because uh, i think it's what canceled the show uh, got the show to ultimately end but uh it also is a i mean they do their best with it but it's just a dreadful uh episode but uh actually it was uh funnier than i remembered and i'd only seen that episode once so uh and i don't think if that hadn't have happened i don't know if i would necessarily would have put it on myself again unless i was just doing like a straight up season by season marathon so uh yeah no i i love that and i uh, i greatly appreciate uh the service that it does yeah i was hoping to let people know like what what it has on demand but when i go into the on demand section in my browser it doesn't populate all the way i'm gonna try it in the, the microsoft browser because firefox is playing live just fine but not uh it's not giving me the on demand portion yeah so. I, th- I think you'll appreciate it. Like uh, they have like a, a good selection of kids show, like ch- the kids channels on there, including like uh, one's called like uh, um, like the afternoon cartoon hour, like the channel or something. But it's all like cartoons that oh. aired like in the afternoon. Of uh, I'm not sure like the time frame of when they were, but it's like '90s, like midday afternoon kind of like cartoons. Gotcha. And. Uh, and, a, and I think they also have, like, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles channel. Uh, so I imagine they have, like, all the different eras there. Um, 
and I, I think some classic Nickelodeon stuff on there as well. So a quick apology to those of you watching on YouTube. Um, I set up a hotkey to transition us uh, at the end of the episode, um, and it transitioned us when I typed in Pluto TV into my browser. So for a few minutes there, you went, the sound was coming through, but you could not see anything but a black screen. So sorry about that, guys. Oh, it's all good. And then um, on YouTube, uh, I actually ended up watching um, these interesting uh, documentary type things. Uh, I'm a I'm a big fan of uh, well, not a big fan, but like one of the things that interests me is uh, like lost episodes or lost kind of like TV shows or um, and, and like and so like there's these two documentaries by this guy. And documentaries are like 20 minutes long, but uh, it's these two different stories uh, by this YouTuber by the name of uh, Blame It On George, and that's with a J instead of a G. And uh, these two different things are about uh, two different bits of lost media that uh, users remembered as kids, but didn't know what where to find it. Gotcha. Um, oh, one story was a uh, a, sh a cartoon that aired on uh, Sesame Street called uh, The Crackmaster. And it's from like the late 70s. And uh, it was this big, like, I think 10 years uh, lasting kind of like search where this person was trying to find a uh, this old cartoon on from Sesame Street where uh, um, this girl imagines uh, seeing like all these uh, like animals and stuff from the cracks on her wall uh, from the paint hmm. and uh, basically using her imagination to kind of you know see shapes out of them like how you can see shapes in clouds and whatnot uh, but the reason why this person remembered it was because there was a, a portion that was kind of a little frightening for him as a kid because that's where uh, the, eventually she met something called the crack master and like it was this uh, face in the wall that started getting angry and uh, getting bigger and bigger and uh, so for years this uh, the, the person in this documentary was looking for uh, the the short because uh, he could not find it anywhere and there was like so little information on it uh, but like it's a fascinating story where even like the the woman that narrated it uh, uh, the short uh, even contacted the person and, and got involved with the whole thing it it's found and you can watch the whole thing on, on YouTube um, so there's that story and then the other one is a uh, short that some guy remembered when he was a kid seeing on uh, the Nickelodeon show Pinwheel which was a uh, Sesame Street style show for them as well uh, but it's uh, the the name of the uh, uh, that they kept referring to it was called Clockman uh, there was this short uh, like uh, where this girl was uh, kind of dragged into a clock by this person, uh, this wizard, and uh, he couldn't remember where, like, like he had vague memories of it, but it was something that haunted him, like ever since he was a kid, and he wanted to be able to see it again before, like, you know, he got old and died. And it's the story of him tracking that, uh, the community of people, at first not believing that this was a real, actual, cartoon and then ultimately finding out that it is and an, another years long search for it and uh, that's also on YouTube and uh, it has a satisfying conclusion as well Nice, but both are just uh, fascinating because it, it reminds me of like the there were like two things like for me that I remembered in my own life of uh, stuff I watched as a kid that uh, I couldn't remember where I had seen it or what it was called you know, one was actually the cartoon version of the Phantom Tollbooth, 
and uh, <laughs> I uh, may actually managed to realize what the name of it and everything by just randomly pulling out a book one day and recognizing a character on it. Um, but the other one was uh, from uh, the movie Crawl the Conqueror, I think. And uh, I saw that thanks to a Rift Traps. Uh, there was like a scene or two that I remembered seeing on TV, but I never knew what it was from. And then as we're watching the, the riff tracks of it in theater, I was like, you know, I bet this is where this is from. And sure enough, it had, uh, I saw the scenes that I remembered, although different, a little bit differently from what I remembered, but I think that's basically just from, you know, age and everything. Yeah. I don't know, I, I find that stuff kind of interesting. So uh, th those are fun little uh, documentaries that you can watch that, uh, doesn't take a whole lot of time, but it's uh, just a fun story. Excellent. Well, I've never been able to get, I haven't been able to get the Pluto TV stuff to show me what's on demand, but if any of you are interested in, in it, and this is certainly not sponsored, it just happened to come up and easy to just hop on a browser. So if you're looking for it, you can stream it on uh, pretty much anything. Um, Amazon Fire TV sticks. Uh, Apple TV, like you said, Chromecast, because, you know, it's right from your Android device, PlayStation, TiVo, Xfinity, and Roku. So, when we're done, of course, you know what I'm going to do, right? I'm going to go upstairs and add it to my Roku, since it's free. Yeah, no, I mean, it's a cool service. I mean, yeah, it, you, you have to kind of, it's not something that you can just uh, select and watch what you want, but you, you know, it's still like you're going to find a channel that of something that you like there and it's funny because <laughs> like it, it that app had been sitting on my uh apple tv for years and i never looked into it <laughs> and then come to find out oh that not only it doesn't have a, you know not only is it like a pretty cool app but it also has like your favorite tv show on there the one thing that i'm surprised that they don't have at least I think they don't have is a, a Star Trek channel because I think that would be uh, something that would fit very well with uh, the fact. Yeah, well, there are a couple places you can get Star Trek and get all the Star Trek anyway. So, like, if you're playing page for sure. on Netflix, you can get Star Trek on Netflix. Here, I can get it on Netflix. I can get it on. Uh, there's a Canadian service called Crave, which uh, is owned by Bell Media, which uh, is not is pretty much our version of Hulu. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the stuff that Hulu puts out for over on your side of the border, uh, that's where we can get it. So, like, I've been watching Animaniacs on demand, and uh, that's basically how I've been getting it. Is through that mm -hmm. or for, through Prime. I'm not sure which one. I always have to search for it when I want to watch it, but, uh, yeah, Star Trek's pretty, uh, pretty available since it's so popular. Yeah. Probably Paramount Plus as well. Yeah, I hope Paramount Plus doesn't pull it and put it all there because that would be a horrible thing for me because I use, I watch Star Trek fairly regularly. And by that, I mean, if I'm sick, I'm watching Star Trek. I hear you. Yeah, like on the, there have been a few times in the past years where I've gotten sick enough that I've been bedridden for a few days, and I don't know what it is, but when I'm sick, my sleep, you know, most people, they get sick and they sleep. I get sick and I can't sleep. I doze. I'm literally, it doesn't make any sense. I'm literally up from the time I get sick until the time I'm done. And then I sleep. This is a real bugger when you got four kids. But uh, I'm kind of, I'm kind of similar. Usually I wake up in the middle of the night when it first uh, really starts hitting me. And then it's uh, time to watch TV. And it's always a, uh, 
kind of been like that as a kid because that's how I used to watch like Mr. Wizard, uh, uh, this science program on Nickelodeon that was only available if you got up at like 5.30 in the morning. Now I can hear again. Nice. <laughs> <clears throat> but anyhow, I think that uh, pretty much sums us up for this episode, wouldn't you say? That's been yeah. pretty good. Yeah, and one quick recommendation. Uh, check out Scare Tactics on uh, uh, Prank Encounters on uh, Netflix. It's a uh, prank show that's done uh, by starring the kid from uh, one of the kids from Stranger Things um, I recommend it because each one's kind of themed of a uh, horror or a uh, science, science fiction type story where uh, two people are that don't know each other are kind of like thrust in a situation with other strangers and uh, that are all actors and in on it but uh they tend to recreate uh, some fun, uh, creepy stories that uh, to try to, you know, scare them, you know, for fun. And there's some really amazing episodes. Uh, there's one that uh, my one of my favorite ones. that's definitely worth watching. Is uh, uh, the cursed uh, uh, mummy sarcophagus that <laughs> comes to life, and uh, they activate it. <laughs> An, an ancient curse and uh, that, that one's just pretty funny and, and and they do like a it's interesting too to watch the people that aren't in on it uh, like how they react because there's oh, yeah. some people that kind of like because uh, you know you always wonder like what would you do in a, like a situation like mm -hmm. if that was to ever you know happen and this is kind of like a good way to test it and uh, like you'll be it's kind of surprising like some people just kind of like you know stand back and just kind of like let the other people kind of like deal with like the situation uh my there, i've definitely seen a lot of uh you know ladies uh get like into the heat of the action and try to <laughs> to stop some stuff so uh you never quite know exactly what you're going to get but it's uh fairly like it's a fairly entertaining show and i i've enjoyed every episode i've seen of it all right, sounds good. So definitely something to look into. But with all that being said, if you want to follow us throughout the week, and believe me, I'm sorry I didn't do this last week, but eh, I forgot an hour ago. If you want to follow us throughout the week, I am at DRAlien201 on Twitter, and that's pretty much the best place to find me. You can also get on find the show on twitter at syndicated pipe and you can always email us if you if, if you feel the need uh at reverse flash time at gmail.com please somebody email us so that i you know kind of feel justified in keeping this dang email address open greg where can the people find you you can find me on twitter even though i haven't used it pretty much for the past week other than that to message people um, at uh, the underscore Badger Piper. I'm also on Instagram at the Badger Piper. All right. And with that, have great smokes, good entertainment, and we will see you next week. Catch you later.